and welcome and thank you very much for coming this short presentation on the MSc Data Analytics for Precision Medicine Master's Program running here at UCD. So my name is Brendan Loftus. I'm a professor of uh, genomics in the School of Medicine. And with me on the call is Dr. Efrul Ramlan. He's uh, an assistant professor in data science for genomics, the background in computer science and data analytics and uh, applied AI. So the format, I guess, is that uh, we've introduced ourselves. I'm going to go briefly through I guess an overall view of the program. It's a relatively bare bones presentation, if you like, which, which introduces the core idea behind the program. And hopefully either during the presentation or after the presentation, there'll be time for, for questions or for clarifications about things that you, you may not be sure of. So in terms of uh, Stephen's controlling the buttons here, so just to, to state, so this is the second year we're running the program. Our first year students are now going into their summer, summer projects or their internship projects. But the genesis behind the program itself was really to bring some of the data analytics skills to life scientists. In this scenario in particular to the area of precision medicine, but also to deliver general skill sets in, in data analytics. And uh, this is outlined here. So the course breakdown, I suppose, which mainly fall into four areas in the taught component, which would be applications in precision medicine. And here we're talking precision oncology, infectious disease, um, drug development, um, statistics for, for, for um, cohort discovery, data, data analytics skills, R programming, multivariate analysis, Python programming with an emphasis on life science, applied AI, data mining, and machine learning, again, with a focus on life science. And so that forms the, the bulk, I suppose, thematic areas in the, the taught component of the program, which is 60 credits. The remaining 30 credits are either broken down to depending on, on, on what the, the student will do. And that's either at a research project. And this year, for example, we've had a number of different bioinformatics research projects with uh, research groups within the School of Medicine <coughs> or you know, outside the School of Medicine, the Conway Institute, et cetera. Um, internships, we've uh, two of our students are gone to uh, Novartis in their real world analytics team. And this year, uh, since Efrul has joined us in April, He's uh, offered and two students are taking up an applied AI project, one in the area of, of genomics and the other in the area of uh, image recognition. So that gives you a sense for the overall, uh, I suppose, concept and thematic idea behind the, the MSc program. So if Stephen goes on to the next slide. So what I'll just sort of drill down into some of this more specific modules, I guess. And I'm, and I'm taking here the, the full-time program, the part-time program will be a little bit different. So the full-time program is, again, it's a little bit different to last year. We've, we've expanded it a bit. We've made it a little bit more computational this year. So it will be split into four, uh, sorry, 40 credits of core modules. And they're outlined here, medical research design, regulation, and ethics, professional skills and developments, then you're talking about, you know, developing your CV and looking for particular jobs. We have a, a industry panels. Um, we have, in terms of the uh, programming element, we have Python for Life Sciences, which is uh, a module run by Afrul, uh, data programming with R, which is run through the, the School of Statistics, and um, statistics for human genomics, which is run to the School of, of Public Health and um, life sciences and data mining, life sciences, machine learning and data mining for life sciences. Again, two modules that we run through by uh, Efrul this year. So Efrul joined us this year 
and has brought this new content to it. So our last year students got machine, like I suppose a standardized machine learning uh, module through computer science. But I think that having modules such as life science, uh, such as machine learning and data mining and applying them to a life science domain, I think is much more preferable for us. So Stephen, next slide. So for the optional modules, then maybe 20 credits from these. So information visualization is again, it's a module that's run through um, computer science, basically talking about how do you visualize information to, to best tell a story using, using data. Biostatistics and, and data management, that's run through the CRC. It leans, I suppose, more towards the, the clinical trial elements of things. High throughput technologies, here you're talking about the, the various flavors of uh, genomics technologies, short reads, genome, uh, sequencing technologies, long read sequencing technologies, but also proteomics and, and metabolomics. Precision oncology, obviously a big area of precision medicine, uh, genomics enabled drug discovery. So this is a kind of a, it's an interesting module that's run by uh, my colleague, Sean Ennis in the School of Medicine. So he uh, started up the uh, company, which is now was called Genomics Medicine Ireland, is now called Genuity Science. And this sort of, this module really, it's, it mixes science, I suppose, with um, business opportunities. It, it talks about the business opportunities that genomics facilitates, let's say, in the area of uh, drug discovery. We have another one, Precision Medicine and Infectious Disease. This is again run uh, through the School of Population Health in conjunction with the National Virus uh, Reference Laboratory. This year we had a fair amount of, of COVID. Obviously, genomics can tell you a lot about COVID and a lot about, I suppose, pathogen epidemiology in general. And um, this was a very popular course, a very popular module for our students this year. And finally, multivariate analysis and the online version from the School of Stats. So next slide, Stephen. So finally, sorry, the text is a little bit large here. So again, the final 30 credits then will be either split up into, and I have the applied AI project under research project. So again, the types of projects that we had this year, we had the sort of traditional bioinformatics project where uh, students were placed within a lab. They could be doing something like um, single cell genomics analysis or transcriptomics analysis. Um, and they would essentially work within the lab. We also had two students placed in clinical bioinformatics projects in UCD's partner hospitals. And uh, finally, we had um, a couple of students take up internships programs. So next slide, Stephen. So I think that will cover, I suppose, the main concepts behind the MSc program, the more specific content in there and the types of sort of projects one would have or, or one could do at the end. And they're, they're quite different in terms of the environment that you're in. So, the, so for the research projects, the students were placed or are placed with the, as I said, with the research group and they, they're essentially part of that research group. Um, in the case of the clinical bioinformatics, they will be placed in a, in a clinical NGS lab in a hospital. And for the applied AI projects, um, again, which uh, EFRA will be running, these are sort of more structured projects. Again, this is sort of more skill acquisition and more research. So some are pure research scale application and some are more, I suppose the applied AI, pro AI projects allow the student to develop the skills that they've learned during the modules towards, um, I suppose, developing their AI skills for want of a better word. So that's all that I have for the moment. Um, I would be happy to take any questions. Sorry, I'm looking at the chat here. To do, to do, to do. Oh, okay. So, yes. <laughs> so it would be, uh, so Dan, um, Dan has, has, has asked a question about 
uh, somebody somebody coming for, from a, a computer science background. So I suppose that the, 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 I'm not going to say the challenges, but the things that you would, would learn that would, I would say, based on my experience of previous students, that you would invest time to learn is the genomics, because a lot of precision medicine is around genomics and genetics. And so you would learn, because a lot of the modules that we do use genomics as a sort of a surrogate for data for precision medicine activities, I think you would learn a lot about genomics through the applications modules. So um, Everill's modules, again, run, you have a strong component of, of genomics and bioinformatics in it. And each of the precision module, each of the precision medicine application modules have sort of bioinformatics running as a theme throughout them. So I would say quite a lot. I can I can elaborate on that as well then because I'm I'm a, I'm originally a computer scientist before moving on into biological computing so I I see actually it's it, it will be a great fit uh, because what as Brandon pointed out you will probably need to pick up on the biological side of things because that that will be the type of uh, data set that we will analyze. But in terms of uh, adopting your computer science skills, that should be uh, that should be like peanuts for you to do that. Not 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 going to be not going to be a big problem at all. But there will be more exposure in terms of the technology and different platforms because throughout uh, life science, machine learning, and data mining for life sciences, we'll be using the industry level platform. So you get more exposure. So you run uh, AWS, you run Google. So it, it, it will better equip you with skills that can be translatable to the industry level afterwards then. I guess the other thing, Dan, is probably, given that you have some of the, the, the computer science background, then you probably would choose a bioinformatics project, I guess. and then. So bioinformatics is, a, is, is quite a large tent and it runs, I suppose, everywhere from using the UK Biobank, you know, looking at SNPs and associations with pharmacogenomics or whatever, using cohort studies to right down to uh, spatial transcriptomics where you're looking at a very, you could be looking at a kidney organoid and you're basically looking at how the transcriptome um, evolves as it develops. So bioinformatics covers you know, quite an amount of stuff. And I think you'd, I think you'd, my understanding is if that's what you're interested in, that you would probably want to do a, a bioinformatics project, a bioinformatics research project. 